Welcome to the Holistic Health Bites podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Nicholson, crime scene investigator turned metabolic health investigator. This podcast provides bite-sized episodes to help you have a pristine health scene so you can live a vibrant, adventure-filled life. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Holistic Health Bites podcast. Today, I am joined with a special guest, Amy Longmire, and she's going to tell us all about her amazing health journey and how she got to where she is today, along with some of the work that she does in her life now to help other people have their best lives as well. So welcome, Amy. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Can you just, you know, introduce yourself a little bit and tell everybody a little bit about you, how you got here, anything you'd like to share? Gosh, the short version. My name is Amy. I'm a a psychotherapist and a Reiki practitioner. I also am a writer and an artist. I do all kinds of things, but um, I'm located out in uh, Boise, Idaho, and I've been practicing um, for a couple years. Um, but really it was kind of my own health journey that got me into this position in the first place. (laughs) So really I focus on women and trauma. It's usually either medical trauma or religious trauma. That's usually what we're doing, but it always comes down to like, who am I now? What do I, you know, like I just saw the Barbie movie and everyone's talking about this, but it's like women really need, community. And so I love that we're doing podcasts like this to be able to share our stories. And because I think really storytelling is what kind of brings that healing back around and opens it up for other people. So gosh, I don't know if I answered your question, but yeah, you definitely did. I love that. And I am with you on, you know, all the things community and meeting new friends. And, you know, that's the beauty of technology is we get to meet people from all over the world and hear these fantastic stories that we might not have heard you know, if we didn't have technology because they wouldn't have been near us. And so I just love it. So thanks so much. So you have a pretty significant kind of medical or health history story. (laughs) Um, and I would love to, you know, hear a little bit about that and, you know, whatever you're comfortable sharing and, you know, how it kind of helped bring you to where you are today. Yeah. I mean, let's see the big one. I think that I, we've gone over is that it was October it was October 19th, 2009. And I was working, uh, I was, and I was crossing the street walking. I don't know why I was working because it turned into a worker's comp case, but I was, uh, I was crossing the street and I had the right of way on foot in the crosswalk and was hit by a car um, and making a left turn on a yellow that was actually red because it was Los Angeles. And that's what you do. <laughs> Um, so I was hit and I hit my head on the hood of the car and flipped several times and landed a good 15, 18 feet away on the ground on my left side and sort of landed. And then immediately he was like, I'm going to get run over (laughs) like that feeling of, uh, and the driver ended up stopping a couple inches from my head. Um, so I was not run over, but I was hit and I never broke a bone. I never lost consciousness. I had a pretty massive, most doctors I saw afterwards told me this would retire a football player, like that kind of head injury. Um, And I was told over and over how lucky I was like, gosh, you're so lucky. I remember I didn't feel lucky. (laughs) Felt like I'd been hit by a car. Yeah. (laughs) And really, it was sort of, that was 2009. I moved to Idaho um, in August of 2014, so about five years later, four and a half. And uh, really, it wasn't until I got here that I was really able to really get my health back. Like, I was walking, of course, and holding a job. I went to grad school in the middle of all this. I was fine but I wasn't fine. Like this was not normal. And just over and over it was told by every doctor how lucky I was and that this is normal. I was like, this is not, being hit by a car is not normal. It happens. (laughs) It's 
there's nothing normal about that. So I think it kind of sent me on this long journey of like being able to advocate for myself medically, um, especially as a woman, <laughs> it's very difficult. And um, yeah, learning kind of what is my normal. And I remember kind of getting my, my psych evaluation back and this was several years after the accident, like they were just trying to do, you know, cross all the boxes off. And the, the psychologist, <laughs> she's reading this thing to me at the end. And she's like, actually you're at a 70%. Like we see your baseline and we see your IQ and we see, be kind of can see before and after really. And I was like, this is me at a C. Like, <laughs> wow. I don't know what to say. I think, and people keep asking me because obviously I lived, I've made a complete recovery, but I know that the summer before I'd been hit, I was, I climbed Mount Whitney and I was running and hiking and doing all these things. And I'm not running these days, but lots of yoga, lots of hiking. Um, and then just lots of kind of trying to build community around how can we get women to feel better in their bodies and, be able to advocate for themselves when they go to the doctor, whether that's hormones or infertility or menopause or, or just kind of like, I see a lot of women with like chronic fatigue. And right now there's a lot of, because of COVID long COVID that turns into chronic fatigue and really it's all inflammation <laughs> and it's hard to pinpoint what to do about it and how to ask for help. Right. So yeah, that's a lot, but I know kind of earlier in my twenties, I was put on a series of different uh, anti-anxiety meds as we usually are in our twenties, <laughs> because you go to the doctor as a female and say, I don't feel good or I'm not sleeping well. And that's what they hand you. And I wasn't like, it took me till I got here and started seeing a naturopath to realize I was actually deathly low on iron. And iron mimics anxiety, it mimics uh, sleepless, like insomnia, heart palpitations, shortness of breath, asthma. I didn't need meds, I needed iron. It was just ridiculous. So I spend a lot of time with women going, have you checked your iron? What do you need to get from the doctor? Like, what questions are you going to ask? <laughs> like that kind of thing. So oh, that's, that's my so life. important. I it, totally. It's funny that sometimes it's those little things that nobody looked at. Nobody asked that question. Nobody pushed. Mm -hmm. And I think so often we all just kind of believe what we're being told and we don't question totally. it and we don't ask for more information and we don't ask for references and resources. And yeah, it's so important to really dig mm -hmm. in and, and ask the hard questions. It's your body. It's your health. You know totally. it better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. So that is one of my favorite messages to share as well is yeah. being okay with asking those hard questions and digging until you find the answers that yep. you know are in there. Yep. I was seeing a 61 right now a client who was, <laughs> I mean, lot, years and years of chronic fatigue, and this has been pretty debilitating. And she said, every time she has to find a new practitioner for whatever reason, uh, she's, she calls the office, that office and says, I want to set up a consultation. And really it is, I want to interview you to make sure we are going to work together well. And I love that idea. And I wish more of us would be doing that. I wish I had the wherewithal 20 years ago to be doing this because I wouldn't, well, what, why not? Like we're allowed. Yeah, we're allowed. absolutely. And if somebody's not okay with you interviewing them as the practitioner, they're probably Move not on. the practitioner you want. That's yeah. telling. That's yeah. Telling. yeah. Anyway, I, I love that. So I'd love to pivot a little bit. Thank you for sharing your story. Oh. And it's so powerful to, to, you know, see a classic example of exactly what that looks like and how you can advocate for yourself and how you can, you know, keep digging for answers and not necessarily just take the pill because that's what they're telling you to do and, you know, really find what's really wrong. And mm -hmm. so I know you also work obviously as a therapist and you're also a Reiki practitioner. Can you tell us a little bit about what Reiki is and how it's useful, who it's good for, all of those things? 
Yeah. You know, I found Reiki in when I was in grad school a second time for counseling and a girlfriend in my cohort, um, we were in a trauma class and it was pretty traumatizing <laughs> to go through. And she turned to me and said, she knew a little of my story, this accident and that kind of stuff. And a lot of that stuff was coming up. It's pretty traumatic. And she's like, ah, I really want to do Reiki on you. <laughs> I was like, mm, what is that? Right. And I got in the pretty conservative Christian church. It wasn't there anymore necessarily, but it was sort of like, I don't know what that is. That sounds scary. <laughs> and she's like, relax. We're just going to breathe. And we're just going to turn on our energy. I'm going to turn on mine. I'm going to help you just clear this energy out. Everything is energy, right? All of our cells are motivated by energy. And so how can we just, how can I help you clear this out? And we did it. It was really powerful. And I loved it. It was like, I want that. Like, I want to be able to do that. And so she did it the first time on me, like distance, like over the phone, like she called me and said, okay, I'm going to start and here's what it's going to be like. And here's what I want you to do. And really it was like, lay down and breathe and just focus on your body. I knew, and I'll call you back when it's over. And if you're asleep, totally fine. Like we'll talk later. And so it was like, you'll either get a really good nap or, or you'll really feel some things shifting in your body. And we can talk about that. And so she did it. I knew exactly where she was focusing on me the entire time. Like it was like I had her hands on me and it was really just this focusing and putting energy toward that me in that way. And she was able to really clear some things like I had landed in my accident, landed on my shoulder and my left hip and the left hip still is inflamed. And so she was like, gosh, your left hip. (laughs) gosh that part of your back right and I was like oh my gosh so since then I've been she kind of trained me to do it and then I've been kind of doing like group sessions um on my patreon page things like that to kind of gather people in because again I think we need community around healing and to do it once is great but to kind of build some momentum with other people is really what's most helpful, like long-term. So yeah, that's my spiel about Reiki. (laughs) It's not scary. No, it's definitely not scary. And it, it sounds like such a powerful thing that Mm -hmm. doesn't have to involve, you know, outside things. It doesn't have to involve medications and procedures and, you know, all (laughs) these expensive things. It's just kind of getting in tune with your body and Mm -hmm. letting your body heal itself, which is always the best way to go when you can do that. Totally. Like I, in my counseling, I'm not necessarily doing Reiki as in like focusing and doing that, but I'm helping like Reiki, I think gave me a good vocabulary and a language to talk about like the energy centers and what I'm noticing in people. And so it's like, gosh, the left side of your body or the back, or what's that on your neck or, you know, and so I do use it. It's just kind of more conversationally and subtly, I guess. And it's still, it opens up these conversations about, gosh, this is what happened, or this is what memory comes up when you, when we point at this spot and it's beautiful. It really is. It's helpful. Yeah. So much of our trauma, we do hold on to physically, even if it wasn't a physical trauma, like yours was with the, you know, getting hit by a yeah. car. Yeah. Even if it's an emotional trauma, we hold that in our bodies until we can fully process it and deal with it and, you know, yeah. file it away where it belongs. Yes. We hold that. And so that mm-hmm. might be a neck pain. It might be a knee pain. It might be digestive issues. And mm-hmm. so I think being able to, like you say, point to that and say, you know, what, when, what comes up when you point to that pain or when you think about that pain and being able to bring that back to some prior trauma, I think is Mm -hmm. that's a powerful modality that I haven't heard other people describe quite that way. It's kind of, so it's kind of basically it's somatic experiencing. Like if we're talking about counseling, but really it's also just knowing your body and like befriending your nervous system. (laughs) Like it's really that simple, but it sounds Hard. And I talk to women all the time who are like, get really, they just get really 
anxious or or mad at themselves for having some negative feelings like oh I should never be jealous or I should never be comparing or I should never be angry or and it's like no 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 <laughs> where do you feel that in your body and then make friends with it and they're like no way I was like but you're allowed you're allowed to have that reaction and also be okay with it like allow it for a little while like your response is what you're on the hook for, but having the feeling is not wrong. And so, yeah. And when you become friends with it or pay attention to it, then you can figure out why it's there. What is it telling you? What is, what's, you know, making you feel that way or think that way or whatever. And then you can, when you're consciously aware of it, you can consciously work on it. If it's not something Mm -hmm. you like, not something you want to be thinking or doing, then now it's in your awareness and you can consciously right. work on it. And yeah. I, I just think that's amazing. Well, and even like, this, this sounds kind of silly, but, and I, I find myself saying it all the time and I really have to practice this myself, but it's like, if, if your best friend came to you, sent you a text or showed up on your door and said, I'm having these angry feelings or I'm having, you know, I'm not, you would, you would pour that woman a cup of coffee and you'd show her to your favorite, most comfortable seat and say, tell me about it. Right. But when we have them ourselves, it's, I shouldn't, I should not feel that way. And so then we're just mad. And so we just kind of judge the feeling and then we judge ourselves. For, it's, it's crazy. It is. It is <laughs> yeah. for sure. What are some of the other things that you see pretty frequently that a lot of us are doing that is not helping us or things that maybe we should be doing that we're, we're just not doing yeah. What are some of those um, common mistakes? I think really it is that sort of judging the feeling instead of being nice to it, like having some self-compassion. And it really does take practice because I think we are socialized to take care of everyone else first and we shouldn't have a problem ever or need a counselor or need a doctor. You know what I mean? And that's so being able to be nice to ourselves and ask for the help that we actually need um, is tough and a big first step. Right. Uh, and then I think (laughs) this sounds, well, I've gotten into a lot of just, I think it's just the population I work with, but it's a lot of these hormone issues, whether that's just really high cortisol or, or just like out of control PMS or just not really understanding, hormones at all and so then it's like this big mystery and it doesn't have to be right so knowing those four four phases those four different weeks and being able to go oh I need more protein this week I need more exercise this week and stopping the cycle of like judging the PMS (laughs) like like they say, what is it? Uh, drunk thoughts are, or drunk words are sober thoughts. And I would say PMS words are sober words. Like that's still true. And we don't turn into a different person. It's not this Jekyll and Hyde thing. We are always ourselves, but sometimes we just don't take the time to understand our own cycle. And with that, if we really learn to ride that out, it wouldn't, doesn't have to be bad. Yeah, I think that's true in a lot of areas of our lives. We're kind of not in touch with what our bodies are telling us. Mm-hmm. We're not in touch with true hunger and true needs and what our body is telling us that it needs in the moment or that it needs us to stop doing. We've all just kind of lost sight of what our bodies are communicating to us. And mm-hmm. if you're experiencing something that you don't want to be experiencing and you are aware of that, yeah. you have to lean into that even more and find out why is that happening? Is it a behavior that you have? Is it something that you should be doing that you're not? Is it a a mental block, a prior trauma that you haven't dealt with? Like what is going on? You have to actually lean into that and pick up even more awareness from your mind so that you know how to fix it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, and I think so often we also need to be okay with asking for help. Like Mm -hmm. our bodies are innately intelligent and do have everything it needs to heal. Yes. But that doesn't mean someone else can't get you there faster. So Mm -hmm. I think being able to 
you know, ask the hard questions, advocate for yourself, look at lots of resources, get lots of opinions, Mm -hmm. find the right perfect path for you by being persistent with it and really following up on all those things. Yeah. It's hard because like in my therapy practice, I cannot say though, I probably let it slip a lot. Like don't take your medicine. Like I can't say that legally or ethically, but also like, do you know what you're taking? Do you understand the side effects? Are you seeing the side effects? Do you think you're over medicated? Usually the answer is yes. (laughs) Usually, because it's like, we just live in this, uh, this, well, I think the health insurance and all that is really a broken system. And if we didn't have that, you know, in in a perfect world where everyone just got what they needed or could ask for, you know, the help they needed, it would be great. But right now it's, we kind of socialized ourselves into this way of like, if I go to the doctor, I will feel better. And there's limits to what a doctor can actually do. They spend 12-ish minutes with you, for exam, at most. So you have like 12 minutes to make your case. And they have limits. They can write you a prescription, send you to a specialist, or offer some kind of therapy or surgery. That is it. Like when I went in for some hormonal stuff a couple of years ago, their answer was either a pill or a hysterectomy. I had fully working organs. The issue was my iron, not my hormone. Like, so there's some limits to what they can do. And we get in there and they're wearing the white coat and we are not wearing much. We're wearing the whatever. And so we just do what they say. (laughs) And we, I respect our, we need them, but also there's limits to what they do. And they don't always appreciate that they have limits (laughs) either. Absolutely. Yeah. I think as a society, we've kind of put them on this pedestal and we, we sort of mistakenly believe that they know everything Mm -hmm. and that they have all the answers and that they're going to solve our problems. But like you said, they're really limited based on just the design of our model Mm-hmm. in time, in resources, in what they can recommend. And so it ends up being medications and procedures is really all they can do. Mm-hmm. But there's a whole world of other practitioners, other modalities, other methods that might actually not just mask the problem or remove it, like your mm-hmm. hysterectomy example, right. but actually fix it. You know, yeah. maybe you need a nutrient like you did. You needed iron. Mm-hmm. Maybe you Mm -hmm. have a B vitamin deficiency. Maybe you have a D vitamin deficiency. Maybe you have a toxin overload or an underlying infection, or, you know, there's all these other things that that conventional medical model just isn't set up to explore, to find out. They don't have access to the same testing as, you know, holistic or functional practitioners. They're Mm -hmm. not looking at nutrition and lifestyle stuff at all. I mean, they might tell you like, yeah, go on a heart healthy diet and exercise but that's kind of the extent of it. Mm -hmm. And so I think they do amazing things in their realm. Yes. But we can't expect them to know everything about everything and solve every problem there is. And so sometimes that means you have to be your own advocate and do your own (laughs) research and find the best path or try different things. Sometimes it means you need other practitioners and sometimes it's a team of practitioners. Yes. Yeah, can, you know, do Reiki and can work on nutrition and maybe work with you mm-hmm. on fitness and help mm-hmm. you with sleep. And, you know, there's all these different things. There isn't going to be oh, one sleep practitioner so- that knows everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have one of my clients, she was talking about uh, counseling clients, but she was just having a lot of physical pain just all over and a ton of stress, like a ton of stress. It was like, we need to relieve the stress in order to bring this pain down. I think you need to see a functional, either you need to see a chiropractor to start working on this joint pain, or you need to see like a functional medicine person who can do the whole thing. And so she's finally got into this functional medicine through her health insurance, which is fantastic. And really they had like nine pages of like, okay, here's this and here's this. And she was so overwhelmed that she brought it to therapy and was like, what do I, you know? And so it was great information. And I think she'll do, it's just so many changes at once because it isn't here, take this pill and feel better. It's, I want you to drink a hundred, 
100 ounces of water every day. I want you to start with lemon water. I want you to lay off the caffeine. I want you to sleep 10 hours a night. I want, you know, like all the things. And so it's making those huge changes like all at once is really difficult, but also totally worth it. Like if she got that leaky gut under control, all of that pain would start to level out and then we feel better, right? And so it's hard because it's like we need the right doctor and we need to kind of understand that it really is up to us to do that work. Like, yeah, yeah. I had a client come in and was like, I feel like I'm doing all the talking. I was like, well, I don't know anything about you unless you say it out loud. I can't fix this for you unless you do it. Like, yeah, this this is how we do it. So it's a big commitment when we have to level up and be responsible for our own health and not just rely on, oh, I, my, you know, yearly blood test said I'm fine. So whatever, I guess I'm fine. Yeah, it is a big commitment and rightfully so. We are a complex organism with emotions and physical issues and chemical issues and all the things. And unfortunately, yeah. as much as conventional medicine gets the kind of short end of the stick with they don't do enough and they only have pills and procedures to recommend. Functional mm-hmm. medicine gets the opposite end of that. And they're like, oh, it's so overwhelming and so complicated and too many things uh-huh. and it's so expensive and it's all the things. And so I think we need to, as a society, as patients, as people, as practitioners, mm-hmm. we need to remember that and meet people where they are. Mm-hmm. They don't have to overhaul their entire lives overnight. That's not a recipe for sustained results. But yeah. yeah, there's this whole list of things that you ultimately will want and need to do to live your best life, but you don't have mm-hmm. to do it all today. Right. You can implement these yeah. things in, in baby yeah. steps, in small wow. doses over time. You know, you don't have to leap into the deep end of the pool. You start with mm-hmm. the foundation, start with the easy things, start eating good food, start mm-hmm. walking a little bit more. Like these can be really simple things that can really move the needle yes. without you know, spending $10,000 plus in testing and using supplements instead of medications. Like that's a lot of times functional medicine has just become the more natural approach, but really you take 15 supplements instead of 15 prescriptions. Does Mm -hmm. it feel all that different? Really? Like it might be a little bit less in the side effect realm, but not always side Mm -hmm. side effects can come from supplements too. So I think sometimes we overcomplicate things and overwhelm people with all yeah. that you need to do. And you don't have yeah. to do it all today. We don't. And I know when I first started seeing my naturopath a couple of years ago, I really, it was 90 minutes and it was like, write down everything you've eaten in the last 24 hours and then bring in everything you take, like medication wise. And I, brought it, I mean, I was having all these like Basically, I thought I had an autoimmune disease. I was really just very low on iron and couldn't fight off anything. And so I was getting hives and it was, you know, my hormones were out of control and my skin and my, you know, and so I brought in a gallon size Ziploc bag and set it on her desk with all my inhalers. And I thought I was allergic to everything. And she's like, I'm not anti-medication, but like, this is what this is. And this is a steroid. And this is what this is. And this is a steroid. And it was like, oh, she's like, no wonder your liver isn't working. <laughs> like, no wonder you can't flush anything out. Let's just clear out your liver first. And it was overwhelming, but it was also like, oh, there's an answer. Like, oh, this is like the way my system works. Now I understand it a little better, but I was really like, help me. Like, what do I do? Tell me, tell me to not eat gluten. I'll never do it again. Right. I just want to feel better. And she was like, it's not, I don't think it's gluten. I think we just need to clear out your kidneys and your liver and get this healthy again. And it worked, but it was kind of, you have to be ready for it. Like, oh, I'm going to be making these big changes, you know? Like if you were preparing for a baby, it's like, oh, we need to, we need to rearrange the house. Like we need to do the, you know, cover up the plugs and do the right thing. But we don't do that for ourselves a lot of the time to make those big changes. So. Yeah. I definitely think having the right mindset going into it is kind of the first step. You do have to be ready for the work because it is going to be a commitment. Like you said, a 90 minute session, that's tremendously different than the seven to 12 minutes that you get with your conventional medicine doctor. 
but it can also feel like you're drinking from the fire hose with all the information that you're going to get in 90 minutes and all of the recommendations that you might get in that time. So going in with the right mindset of like, I'm going to get some answers. I'm going to get some changes. I'm going to, you know, be able to overhaul my life. I don't have to do it all at once, but I will have the information and Mm -hmm. and then you can just kind of make steps to go forward from there. But having that insight from someone who has that level of training is amazing because no matter how in tune you get with your body, are you likely to be able to look inward and go, I think my kidneys need help. Like Right. Instead of a kidney symptom, like a bladder infection or something, yeah. you might not know that kidneys or liver are the problem. And so that's where practitioners mm-hmm. really can get you the answers faster. Yes. But just, just know that you don't have to implement everything right away. Mm-hmm. There, oh, I do have it. Um, have you read any of um, is it Donna Eden's books? On- I haven't read that. No. There's this one and then she's energy medicine. So it's a lot of like how to trace your meridian lines and kind of do some energy work. She has another one that's just for women. It's on hormones and it's fantastic. Like there's just some like tapping silly. They sound silly. And yet when you do them, you're like, oh, that's how you get rid of a panic attack or, oh, that's how you get rid of bloating during PMS or, oh, that's how, you know, like, oh, I understand myself a little better. I understand where I can make these small, like it's free. I mean, you buy the book, but it's free to do. It's not a prescription. There's no side effects. And you start to kind of have some ownership over your body a little more and starts to feel, that feels really good. That's very empowering. That's what I found. Yeah. Yeah, I think there are so many things that we have control over that we just either don't give any attention to or maybe we're not even aware of it, but like the foundations, literally the food you put in your mouth mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. exercising or moving on some level, I mean, yeah. drinking water, getting sunshine, like these are the mm-hmm. foundations of health. Start mm-hmm. there. If these are things yeah. you're not currently doing, start there and then add in breath work, add in mm-hmm. tapping, add in mm-hmm. meditation or journaling or, you know, all yeah. these other things, which are all still relatively free, Hopefully. relatively easy to do, seem yeah. like they're not making a difference, but over time they absolutely do. And you're controlling your physiology. Yeah. It's amazing. The, yeah. the foundations are really the key to everything. It's not about the medications and the procedures and the prescriptions and the supplements and all of those bigger bucket things. Mm-hmm. I mean, sure. Those, those all have their place. Of course, if you have you know, something that really needs to be removed from your body, then procedures are what you need. If you mm-hmm. truly, you know, have a disease that a medication is the only mm-hmm. answer for, then of course, those all have their place, mm-hmm. but start with the foundations and maybe you'll never need those more extreme things. It's true. It's true. I remember saying to my mom a while ago, uh, like looking at our, I think I was filling out forms to go to the doctor, or, you know, establish care with someone. And it's all, all your history, you know, does cancer run in your family or does this, you know? And I looked at my mom and I was like, I feel like our gene pool is kind of a cesspool. Like, I don't. <laughs> and she was like, Amy, they didn't take care of themselves. That's why they were so like, that's why all the men had diabetes. That's why, you know, these were all preventable things. I was like, you're right. Okay. You're right. I, we're not subject to that in this way we used to be, like that hereditary stuff. We really can sleep better, eat better, drink more water, flush our systems, and not do all of that craziness. <laughs> Most of those diseases are not like things we're born with. They're not birth defects. Mm-hmm. They're not, mm-hmm. you know, written in stone, but yeah. they are lifestyle and diet related. And so, both lifestyle and diet are the cause of lots of these diseases that also makes that the answer to these things. That's the cure. That's how you reverse it. That's how you don't live with it anymore. You stop doing the thing that caused it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't. I know I'm always asking my clients, how are you sleeping? And they're like, I don't know. (laughs) We're just not aware of what our yeah. bodies are doing. And yeah, that's, that's really one where it starts. 
does. It does. And I think it that's such a stress, can be such a stressful cycle of like, oh, I didn't get any sleep last night. I better sleep tonight. And then there's more pressure and then there's more pressure and then we don't sleep. And then, or we take something our doctor gives us and then, yeah. So. Yeah. And then you're not getting good quality sleep. You're asleep, but you're not hitting the deeper levels of sleep. It's not natural sleep. It it doesn't give you the same benefit as truly fixing the problem of why are you not sleeping? Mm-hmm. Or is, do you have a cortisol rhythm imbalance? Do you have too much light in your room? Is it not cold enough in your room? Is it, mm-hmm. you know, like get to the root cause of it. Do you have, are you drinking caffeine too late? Are you taking other products that are interfering with your sleep? Like yeah. all of these kinds of things get to the reason why you're struggling, fix that. And the problem mm-hmm. will go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it, like, we're like, yeah, it's so easy, but it, it isn't like our, like our willpower our ego is getting in the way and just yeah. like that's hard. Yeah. It's really simple, but not yeah. always easy. It's easy to not do as well mm-hmm. to gloss over it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. How can people find you or learn more about the work you do and reach out if they want to? Yeah. Amy Longmire.com. A-M-I-E Longmire. L-O, like the TV show. L-O-N-G-M-I-R-E.com. That's probably the quickest way. Um, that's my name on Instagram. Also. Yeah. Those are probably the fastest ways to get I love that. Thank you yeah. so much for making that simple. And of course we will leave that in the show notes for people to just easily click on and reach okay. out to you. Do you have any final words you'd like to leave everybody with? Mm-hmm. I guess I, I think it's a lot of like when we talk about counseling and I, I think it happens in Reiki too, where you're really just counseling is a lot about bringing that unconscious to the consciousness. And so like a, a lot of us are living on autopilot until something terrible happens. Right. And hopefully, I mean, if, you know, we come out the other side and go, oh, I never want that to happen again, or, you know, this horrible thing happened. And so we get kind of stuck in this like uh, what do I do? Right. And so it's that, like when you're talking about like implementing those changes, like sleep or water or whatever, it's, it is simple. And it is kind of a mindset shift of, I have to think about this first, or I have to set this goal for myself first. But what I'm finding over and over is yes, that's true. And we can learn to work smarter, not harder. Like we don't have to hustle do this we can usually rest is the answer (laughs) usually we're coming from a place of rest and my body needs good oxygen it needs good water it needs good sleep then everything else starts to self-correct eventually but and we need community we need rest and we need community (laughs) i love it yeah i think the community piece is the one that's not talked about enough Mm-hmm. that we are social creatures. We are a community-based species and we really do need that. And I think that became much more apparent over the last few years with all the lockdowns and all the things that we yes. all went through. It became yeah. much more apparent that we don't do well when we're locked down by ourselves and we can't mm-hmm. communicate and we can't touch each other and we can't be yeah. in the presence of other beings. And I think that's mm-hmm. a really important piece that we all need to really lean into. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. This was fun. Thank you so much for joining and sharing your amazing story. I'm so glad it all worked out for you and that you finally did get your answers and that thankfully it was something reasonably simple to actually solve all of your disparate systems and issues. So thank you so much for sharing your entire story and all of the great information. We will leave your information in the show notes for people to find you and learn more about you and solve their own health challenges along the way. So thank you so much. And we'll see you again on future episodes. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for being a faithful listener to the podcast. I'd love it if you left me a five-star review on this podcast so that others can more easily find this valuable information. Did you know I also work one-on-one with clients? I approach solving health challenges like I approached solving crimes by conducting a thorough investigation into your case. Sadly, hundreds of millions of people in the U.S. have insulin resistance, pre-diabetes, and diabetes, and the vast majority have no idea. I'm here to fix that. If you struggle with low energy, stubborn weight, hypertension, sleep disturbances, 
or any other undesired symptoms, let's talk. All you have to do is schedule a free call. The link will be in the show notes. And no, you do not need to live near me.